You're listening to Sacks in the Basement, a production of the Broadcast Basement Limited, where every show is 30 minutes of good and comes from a basement bar on the south side of Chicago. Pull up a stool, pour a cold one, and join us right now for Sacks in the Basement. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found and always at SacksInTheBasement.com. so dark down here today. I know, I know. Well, I, we had a bar sign go out down here at the 9-foot homemade oak bar. And so it's funny, too, with the neon. I asked all around Chicago. Like, I called, like, four or five places. Like, what do you do to fix a neon sign, and what about does it cost? And everybody starts off with, like, 160 to 175 minimum, yeah. with the cost getting up to four or $500 for a neon bar sign. I went on Amazon, got a brand new bar sign that I was able to customize what the neon would be made into for $79. There you go. So that bar sign's going in the garbage. It's just a placeholder on the wall, but we have to do the show somewhat in the dark because that section of the bar now is dark because it lights everything up. It is a Budweiser sign after all. I mean, how much Budweiser do you... Oh, I, ne- I never drink Budweiser. I mean... It's a Budweiser American Ale sign. It's been down here since the inception of the bar in 2011 when I built it. I got it for like 80 bucks in a like a blind bid thing at a church function. And like I brought it home. I was like, what am I going to do with this? Well, I'm building a bar and I'm like, I'll just throw it up on the wall. And it's been there ever since. And I think I tried Budweiser American Ale once. Uh, Dave is across the bar from me. My name is Chris. We're friends. We grew up on the south side of Chicago, about 80th and Spalding, Ashburn neighborhood, St. Dennis Parish. We've been following the White Sox for over 40 years together. Dave brought over some old memorabilia because he's cleaning out his basement today. I've been I've been digging the Ron Kittle button that's got a date on the back of it of 10-6 of 1985 when you got this button, Dave. And it's like one of those buttons that was made in like an old button machine. Yep. And, yep, it, yep. and, it, and it's just got like a basic typesetting on it where it's just got his name. It's the cheapest looking thing I've ever seen. It's definitely got to find a spot somewhere on the bar. You know, I've been bringing gifts the past couple of days or the past couple of times. Like I have. Uh, oh, you're I bringing mean, you're all right. your crap over. Like some of it's really good. Like my kid like loves the baseball cards. Good, good. I'm but glad. But some of the other stuff I'm like, that's. That's broken. Like I don't know why you put that in a box and brought it to me. I just I just put anything <laughs> I just put anything White Sox from the old ballpark like in a box and right. I'm like, you know, I don't I don't necessarily have a dedicated sports bar in my house like like right, you right, do. And right. I'm like, well, you know, this stuff is just gonna sit in a box. Maybe my buddy Chris, you know, that I grew up Ashburn neighborhood, uh, which is now a war zone, and we've been following the White Sox together. <laughs> um, you know, maybe my buddy Chris would find a home for some of this stuff in the bar. I mean, there's good stuff, dude. Like, there's like a full set of baseball cards from there's, like the '85. There's some team. really incredible I mean, there's, stuff. There's some fun there, stuff. There really in there. is some fun stuff in there. Today, we are going to have some fun because the World Series is coming to an end, or may have come to an end by the time this airs, because we're recording this before Game 6 actually right, happens. It's on tonight. And then the clock starts for everything Major League Baseball. So we are going to have some fun today, because today is the day that we're not only going to go through everything that's going to happen over the next couple of weeks, next couple of months, and give everybody kind of a breakdown of how the offseason is going to go. We are going to play roster Armageddon, <laughs> where I am going to go through the roster, and we are going to cut some people. Like the White Sox have made some. I see them already. Sox have already started doing that. Oh yeah, but there is so much more to do. Whenever the World Series ends, some dates are hard in stone. Some go so many days after the World Series. So there could be a day off here, depending on how everything goes. But this is the breakdown. Right away after the World Series, one day afterwards, players can file for free agency. So everybody who can file is gonna file for free agency. Okay. All right. Then. There's a five-day quiet period that begins at the conclusion of the World Series. So again, it's going to be a day off depending on if this ends on Game 6 or Game 7. Teams can negotiate exclusively with their own free agents, but are prohibited from signing anybody. The White Sox should just sign Jose Abreu right then and there. I would think that they would. In the five-day after. He wants to come back. They want to know what they're doing. That that's they're going to be their focus for those five days. I don't know if it gets done, but that's five days where they're doing the quiet period. Now they're also probably putting out feelers, even though they're not allowed to. Like, hey, this guy going to be coming? This guy coming available? What's he looking for? Like the plans are going to be happening, but nothing's getting announced. Of course, and they got to keep real quiet on it. At the end of the qualifying or the quiet period, five days afterwards, clubs have to decide whether or not to extend one-year qualifying offers to all the people declared to be free agents. So after one day, 
People declare to be free agents. Four days later, the quiet period ends, and those teams have to decide, are we doing a qualifying offer? So all this stuff is going to happen before our next show. Like, we're going to have so much for you on the next show because we're going to see a lot with the roster happen very, very quickly between this show and next show. The qualifying offer was about $17.9 million last year. It is expected to be around $18.4 million qualifying offers that are given to free agents to see if they can. And if you attach a qualifying offer to a guy, now, now, now there's a draft pick you're getting back in compensation. Clubs then have to decide at the end of the five-day period who they're going to pick up option-wise for the 2020 season. So the Wellington-Castillo decision occurs. Well, I'm sorry, in what, five days. What day is it? Oh, that's that same five at, the days end of, after. At, at, at the end of the quiet period. Options are five days later. Okay? okay. So by this time next week, it will either be, hey, Wellington got released, or Dave will be screaming for 30 straight minutes. Oh, I will be. 30 straight minutes. I will be. Of just screaming. Like, I mean. Might not even be coherent <laughs> screaming. Like, it might be. It might be just. It'd be like Homer just, Simpson. Homer, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's going to be that. Right? It's going to be that. <laughs> when Chief Wiggum to his kid is like, now let daddy take care of this wandering derelict, this raving derelict. No, seriously, that's that's what it's going to be. It's going to be 30 minutes of me screaming incoherent gibberish into your microphone if they pick up the option on Wellington Castillo. And guess what, Sox fans? You should be screaming incoherent gibberish with me. It's not going to happen, though. They're going to get rid of him. Okay. They're getting rid of him. Okay. Okay. 15 days after the World Series, it's either going to be on the 13th or the 14th of November, depending on if it's Game 6 or Game 7. Free agents have to accept the qualifying offer, or de- or, or uh, they can they can decline it, okay? Okay. Then, and oh, in the middle of this, all the awards are happening, and maybe we'll have Chris Zwick back on, because he's told me he's not, he's not a Hall of Fame vote yet, but the Baseball Writers of America, he, he's one of those guys. He gets to vote on some of these. Oh. So it'll be interesting to talk to him, so I'm hoping to have him back on. You heard him a couple of weeks ago on the show. So you're talking if you about can check out that episode, go check it out. It's the one that's called the new, uh, White Sox New Perspective, I think. So awards called. being, you're talking about like the gold gloves, oh, everything the from Cy the designated Young. hitter of the year to okay. the comeback player of the year to the Cy Young to everything else like that. Okay. Then we've got till December 2nd, and that is when you're going to have the non-tender deadline. Okay, that's when we're going to find out whether or not Yomer's coming back. And anybody else that's being non-tendered, then you're going to have the Rule 5 draft on December the 12th. Then you're going to have your arbitration figures in the beginning of January and January 10th. Your arbitration hearings are basically the month of February. Pitchers and catchers report on February 11th or somewhere around there. So those are the dates. And in the middle of it, you got your GM meetings, your winter meetings. Nothing really is expected to happen at those because free agency lasts so long. But we talked with James Fox last week on the program. And if you didn't hear that, check that out. Go back and take a listen where we talked about they're probably going to go out and try to make a move quick early on. So well, now. Well, winter meetings, here's what you're for the winter meetings and the GM meetings and stuff like that. Obviously, you're not going to get you probably won't. A lot of the big fish won't sign with other teams during those because free agency takes but so there long. Are but there are guys you can go after. But you're going to have you're going to have those moves where you're going after like your mid-tier guys. And you're trying to make trades. Could, yeah, when you're trying to make trades too. So, you'll see stuff like you'll see stuff like that happen during the winter GM. Did you hear did you hear this go, did you hear this crazy trade that you're already hearing that the buzz is going on in Major League Baseball? I have not. The Corey Seager Swap with Francisco Lindor between the the Dodgers and the Indians. No. It sounds like it's like there's a lot of smoke around that idea, and there'll probably be other players involved in it. And and like so, you're going to see that stuff happen probably at winter at GM meetings and winter meetings far more than you're going to get the big signing. But you might get a signing. So now here's the fun part, Dave. Sure. Roster Armageddon. We're doing this now. Yeah. Here All is right. here's the deal with the White Sox roster, and I, I you know there's some misinformation out there. I think a lot of sports writers just look at like how many guys are on the 40 man roster and aren't actually looking at the right number. If you're on the 60 day disabled list, which the White Sox have four players on, you have to come off that in the off season to be added to the 40 man roster. So in reality, the White Sox, before they started making all kinds of moves, had a 44 man roster. They've got six, seven guys that they're probably trying to get on the 40 man roster to protect from the rule five draft. Yes. And we can go through those names here in a little bit. So they've got a lot of moving parts, and they want to bring new people in. Now, of the four guys on the 60-day DL, one is John Jay. So gone. He's just, you're a free agent. Goodbye. 
Right. Happy trails to you. You're off to San Diego to uh, <laughs> hold the Manny Machado's bags. Enjoy your life, okay? So there's three other guys, though, that are going to have to be put on the 40-man roster and then can go back on the DL. But there's a period of time where you have to add them back in to your 40-man. And that's Kopech, Kopech uh, Burr, sorry, and, Burr, and Rodon. And Rodon, yeah. Okay, those are, those are the three guys that you're going to have to to put on there. The White Sox need to shred, guys, and there's a lot of guys to shred, man. <laughs> so now let's go through what they've done so far because it's roster Armageddon time. White Sox players and guys in the organization that have survived over the last few years because the team was in a rebuild and they could just come up, go down, come up, go down, kind of hang in there. They're all going. Say goodbye to names that you have been hearing forever that you and I have known are never going to make this team. So there was some moves this week. Well, yeah, before you get to it, because you missed it, there was one at the beginning of the month. Okay. Beginning of the month, Charlie Tilson was outrighted to the minors on the second. Oh, I did not see that. He right. elected to become a free agent, refused his assignment in the minor leagues. Okay, Despagne on the 14th also refused his minor league assignment and is a free agent. Uh, I mean, that's, we saw that coming. Nobody cares about either one of these. No, no. Okay, um, and I know Charlie Tilson's a local guy, but he was never going to be a part of this. Now we have on the 28th, on Monday, Manny Benuelos, Matt Skoll, the guy that you didn't even remember was on the 40, man. Like he was, he was hiding behind like some furniture. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe if they don't notice me, they won't cut me. Like he was that guy. Okay. Homer in the bushes. Right. Ryan Goins and Ryan Cordell were all outright into the minors and all elected to become free agents. I think actually they were out of options. Well, so they all automatically became free agents. So they are all gone as well. Well, and that's interesting because, you know, just me looking at this, okay, you know, when you assess, when you do the post-mortem on the White Sox 2019 season, what are the, the three positions that needed the most attention? That would have been DH, that would have been right field, and that would have been starting pitching. What this tells you is that the team is aware of that problem. And they look, they've been saying they've been aware of the problem, but saying, you know, saying they're aware of the problem and actually doing something about it is two totally different things. What this shows you is that they're trimming off the fat at these certain positions so that they could make room to fill these positions with you know, whatever it is they want to fill it with. Yes. And now here's the thing. So I tweeted this out yesterday. Remember, the guys in the 60-day DL have to, have to become part of your roster at some point in the offseason. So in reality, you have to add those three guys back on. You're down to 35 on your 40-man, but you like those three of those spots are going to be taken up at some point. Right, so, you 30, those guys so 38. Off. So really only have two spots that are open right now. So you have, a, you, you have a lot of flexibility and a little flexibility depending on how you're doing things with your days. You're also going to have guys you're going to decide not to tender and everything else like that. But there are guys you can trim off this list. Let me talk about the guys that you want to make sure you keep on this team. Because there are guys that need to be protected no, I don't have the before list in, the Rule 5 draft. No, I don't have the list in front of me. I'm going to give you You that. do. So. Dane Dunning. They're probably going to want to protect him. Yes, they, they will. They put all this time in. Blake Rutherford. They're probably going to protect him. Jimmy Lambert. Been on this show before. We like Jimmy. Jimmy got hurt but was pitching really well. And a lot of people told us all through the early part of the season, and then we talked to Jimmy as well. He's one of those guys they see as a possible starter or as starting potential on their team. They're going to protect him. Okay. Zach Birdie. We've had his aunt on before on the program. Remember <laughs> we have, I remember okay? that. Yeah. Zach is one of those guys they're going to have to protect. And then you've got guys that are like right on the edge there and Bernardo Flores and Yerman Mercedes. I don't know where Yerman's going to go because in reality, he's just a hitter. I mean, he plays catcher technically, but he's just a hitter. But they may want to protect those guys as well. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six guys. Six guys right away. And you don't know if there's somebody else they want to add in there, but we'll just work with the number six. Right. So, so working means, with the number six, we need to make more room. Yeah. You, need okay. to, you, you got to cut like what? Three more guys? Yeah. We, 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 well, uh, four more. Four more. Four okay. more guys, technically. Now you're going to have guys become free agents. So let's go through guys that we can easily remove from this team. And I was doing this yesterday before they made their moves. I have Ben Whalos crossed. I had all four of those guys crossed off. Right. So I had all four of them crossed off, but there's more. I want to just take a machete to this roster. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, cause here's the thing. In what, honor of Halloween, you want to Jason, you want to Jason Voorhees, the yes. roster. Okay. I want, I want, I want to come out of my closet. Okay. 
or some somebody else's closet. Like, I want to be hiding inside of Dylan you have, Covey's closet. You haven't closet. come out of the closet yet, I'm, Chris? I'm hiding inside of Dil Dylan Covey's closet, and I'm waiting to come out with my machete to remove him from the roster. I don't think they're going to do no, Dylan No, they're not, Kobe, but I mean, like, yeah, but I, uh, like, I want deep cuts. Okay, you know, let, let's go through everything we have here, okay? So I went through, and I was, like, cutting guys left and right. Nova's going to become a free agent. So right, take so that off. off. We're, okay. at 30, we're at 37. 37. Okay, so he's going to be gone. Hector Santiago, too, we're at 36. Okay, you're going to get rid of Castillo. You're at 35. God, I hope so. Okay, you're going to get rid of Castillo. You're at 35. You're not going to tender Yomer. You're at 34. Again, I hope they're not going to. Well, no, why would they? I mean, they have, two, no. you know, they have, Madrigal no coming, they have Madrigal coming up. And, uh, and, and you know, they have the, so now, uh, the ladies' man, Danny Mendek, up there, too. That, so. gets me, that gets me the six spots for the Rule 5 draft. Yes, it does. But what do I want to add? What do I want to add to this team? Well, you can't add anything at the moment without cutting right, right. more. Okay, so now I have to cut more. See, well, that's because, the thing. because like, you like, want to listen. We have to really go after this. Roster. I mean, like, we need to free up a lot of spots. Because here's the thing. What you want to see, what I as a White Sox fan want to see when it comes to the, the three dumpster fire positions. Okay, again, right field, uh, right field starting pitch DH. It's right field, starting pitching, DH. You want to see them fill those spots. Two starting pitchers, too. Yeah. Do you want to see them? That's four spots. You want to see them fill those spots. I'm saying before the turn of the year, because you don't want to get deep into free agency where you're chasing after the big fish, and then you don't get the big fish, and then you're stuck holding the bag. All right, so we've got four so spots you, so we you want to make. So you want to see this happen before 2020. All right, Dave, so let's think about this. We have the guys from the 60-day coming back on. We've let the free agents go, go off into the ether, okay? <laughs> we've waved goodbye to Yomer, and, and there's still this talk of like, well, maybe they could get him back. I don't care if you bring him back or not, but here's the thing. Right now, you still need four spots for those four things that we said you need. The right fielder, the DH. And the two starting pitchers. And the two starting pitchers. Minimum. And you don't know what other moves they want to make. Because those are the things you need to have, but you don't know what else they're going to do. So we're, think of the guys we've already ripped through. So now let's give me, let, let me give you some other names. Sure. Guys, and you tell me, would you get rid of this guy to make space? Well, oh wait, Ross Detweiler, or Ditweiler, whatever the heck his name is, he's gone because he's a free agent. Okay, yeah. I've opened up a spot. I left That's, him off. So you have one extra, we have one Open extra up a spot. spot here to okay. work with. Okay, all right, cool. all right, all right. So now, Daniel Palka. Oh, boy. Um, I mean, this I is going to anger the Palka gonna, Yeah, we're going we're gonna to anger, anger a the lot Palka of Palka people. Maniacs. Yeah, but yeah. In fact, how about this? Don't make a choice until I give you a bunch of names. Okay, what, let's... Because that way you won't cut him too early. Right, okay? right, okay. Daniel Palka. There's a guy that you can make a, you can make a case. Okay, Dylan Covey. Is he ever going to do anything... More than what he is. And if you actually go out and get two starting pitchers, do you really need Dylan Kobe? I don't point? think they give up on him that this early, though. Carson Fulmer. <sighs> do they give up on him? It's time to give up. Okay. I do. I personally do, yes. But he's a White Sox draft pick. Josh so. Osich. Now, here's a guy that is going to be arbitration eligible. I wasn't so super impressed with him. Here's a guy that you could also put on the chopping block. Jose Ruiz. I was not a big fan of him coming out of the bullpen. No. Was, I mean, and you can't cut all bullpen guys too. No, you're no. going to need pitching next year. Right, you are. So you can't. And Osage, that's and that's why and that's why when I look, Osage, I'm probably fine with Ruiz. Eh, you know, not so much. Zebby Zavala. See, here's the thing with Zavala. I mean, is he ever going to be anything more than he is? Like we talked about this. I mean, he's been up here a couple times. Didn't really impress. You know, you almost wonder if that's the type of guy they can get something for in a trade, Chris. Well, here's the thing. You're, if you go out and you get Yasmani Grandal, you have three catchers now. And you're going to be keeping them all up at the major league level. And if you decide you want to keep Yerma Mercedes, even though he's not a great catcher, he's the fourth one sitting in AAA. Yeah, I don't... So. Are you going? It might come down to Mercedes or Zavala while you're trying to figure out if who you're protect, if you're going to protect Mercedes in the in the Rule Five draft because we're getting into a crunch. And I named a bunch of relief pitchers, but we know that we need to make some room, right? Yes. All right. So if we need to make some room, I'm going to name other guys. I'm going to I'm going to name three position players, three or four position players. You tell me which one you definitely cut off this team because you're going to have to at least cut one of them. Sure. Okay. 
Because you've already named you've named a bunch of right. relievers, and, and right. we've already talked about how we You're need. Definitely going to have to draft some guys. You're not going to get rid of uh, Mike Rodolfo and uh, Louis Basabe because you still no. want to see what these guys become. No, right? Absolutely okay, not. And I don't think you get rid of Danny Mendick. You don't drop him off of the forty man roster. You, I, I value him more, and I value Yomer until well, you get yeah, Nick not, Madrigal. Not until not. In, I mean, because okay. the you need a you're going to need a placeholder until Madrigal comes up, and and Danny Mendek fits that better than Yomer does because you're going to have to pay Yomer a lot of money to stay right. here. I want to tender Leary Garcia, and I still think that the team looks at Adam Angle as possibly a twenty six man that can do speed and defense for you in the back end of a game. So all that's left is Daniel Palka. Hmm. Is it? Yeah. I After mean, that, you're talking starters. It's going to be, yeah. It's, He's gone, man. It's going to be Daniel very Polka's upsetting gone. For, for a lot of people. But. I don't see how he survives the roster crunch unless they decide not to protect a lot of guys in Rule 5. And trust me, if they don't protect the right guys in Rule 5 and they go out and go free, and a guy that you picked up that was cast away by another organization had a fairly okay season you know, it was an above average season and then had a terrible season after that. You have to make a decision at some point. Like, this is where your evaluation of talent comes in because you'll get crucified if you let the wrong guy go. I, I think that they'll move on from him. Okay. They're going to have to move on from some of these pitchers. I mean, Evan Marshall, the big debate is do you, do you bring him back? Do you tender him something? I think they will. I mean, I, originally on Twitter, we put out on Twitter, like, you could probably not tender him. But when you're looking at all the other pitching that you have, you're, pro- you're probably going to tender him. Yeah. So there, there's, there's so many moving parts here, but you're going to have to see some names come off. I mean, think of the names we have said as we're doing this. This is why I said it was roster Armageddon. We're trimming more than 10 names off of the 40-man roster. More than 10 guys are leaving this team. It's going to be very interesting if they do, in fact, move on from Polka because – now you got to pick up a right fielder in free agency or through oh, well, a trade. You listen, don't have a choice even at that with, point. Even with Polka. You, even you with Polka. I, mean, I don't want him standing out there starting in right field. I don't. Do you want him out there? No, I don't. Okay, but I, mean, I don't at want this him out point, there. If he's standing out in right field as my starting right fielder next year, point, we fail. At this point, you have nothing. I mean, if you get rid of him, though, you have absolutely nothing that you could put out there. But the thing is, I would never put him out there. That's that's the thing. I don't see any difference in Daniel Polka than Ryan Cordell or Charlie Tilson. I don't. They're all guys that are replacement players. If even. And you were able to move on from the other two guys. Yeah. So I, I Who had better season? And I like Polka. I do. I mean, what a cool guy. He wore a socks in the basement hat on the corporate podcast <laughs> at Soxfest. <laughs> yes, he did. I mean, the guy's the guy's my hero. I, I I want nothing but the best for him, but I'm looking at the I'm looking at the names and I'm looking at the numbers. I don't know how he survives it. Now maybe he does. Maybe there's smarter people than me. But I, I don't know how he survives the thing. Hey, thanks for listening. If you're in the podcast and you like beer, craft beer reviews, craft brewery tours, fatherhood, drunken singing, outrageousness, late 1990s morning radio, trapped 20 years later at a nine-foot homemade oak bar, the original Broadcast Basement podcast is still available everywhere podcasts can be found and always at broadcastbasement.com. And it is still 30 minutes of good in a world of dumb with a new on-demand episode every Thursday. Maybe listen to it after this show, which continues now. What's up, uh, Socks in the Basement? Uh, This is Rich. I'm calling uh, to be a GM for Jerry Reinsdorf's Chicago White Sox. Um, So... Basically, uh, Ryan Thorpe was in the news about finishing in second place, so you'd think he'd uh, be a little rattled about that and uh, want to make some moves for the White Sox soon to come. So I'm his man. So what I would do is I'd re-sign a Brayu, try to get him to like a one-year deal, maybe two years, uh, two years at the most, but I'd hope if he'd like to stay with the White Sox and sign a one-year deal and uh, see how he does this season. But uh so I'd re uh, re up a Brayu, and then I'd bring in that uh, sign Eric Sogard, uh, basically to be a Yoma replacement. Um, try to get him for like a one two year deal. Um, have him split time with Mendick before uh, we see what we do with Madrigal. Sogard the lefty bat, and uh, I think the main focus for me would be lefty bat and maybe lefty pitching. I'd make a trade and I'd trade for Josh Reddick. Uh, Reddick's a thirty two year old gamer. He's a lefty bat, uh, 
loves playing right field. What you'd have to give up to uh, acquire him would probably be like Steel Walker, maybe uh, a Rutherford plus, you know, for pitching, you're going to sign Oda Rizzi for two to three year deal. He's a righty. Um, and then also what I do is I trade for Caleb Smith uh, for the Marlins. He's a lefty. Uh, he's pretty underrated. He had pretty solid numbers for being on the Marlins. And uh, if that something like that didn't happen, uh, you could probably aim for like Alex Wood, who's a free agent. That's a good call. Remember, if you want to play White Sox GM, 708-459-8406-247, just call. Some little computer's going to say that the subscriber's not there, but leave a message. That's us, 708-459-8406. The Josh Reddick thing is interesting to me. Um, I just am afraid that we'll be fleeced by the Astros because they are they are the gold standard right now. I mean, you want to be the Astros, and so I'm I'm nervous about any trade, but it's an interesting idea. I don't know if I'm a big fan of the Eric Sogard thing because I think that Madrigal will be up here within a week to 10 days. Yeah, after I mean, the season Madrigal, starts. Madrigal, so Madrigal, you don't need to make that. You don't need to make that move because right. then he's going to be playing. I mean, let's be let's be straight about that. Like you will see Madrigal here in the month of April. Yeah, like that's going to happen. Yeah. I, so I, I mean, to spe- to throw money at that position when you have a Danny Mendek who can at least you know fill that hole for the week or two that you're going to keep Madrigal down there. You know, I, I get it, but I don't think that's something that I think that money's probably sp- better spent elsewhere, especially if you're looking for two starting pitching. I mean, I like that White Sox fans are sitting around thinking about this. Here's a, here's another one. Yeah, I've been hearing you about your uh, thing about the White Sox. I think they should go get uh, right fielder Jock Peterson. They was trying to go get him last year, Jock Peterson. He's a good left-handed hitter. And I'll go get J.D. Martinez, D.H., and if he don't opt out, then I'll go get Edwin. And then the pitcher, starting pitcher would be Jake. i go get Jake from Minnesota. He's a starting pitcher. Steven Sparsberg, if he ain't too expensive. I know Jay, uh, Jose Catana, they're going to let him walk. Cubs going to let him walk. Jose Catana, sign him back. And... uh like you said, if they get Matt, uh, they get, uh, Mass and Bungarner, go ahead. But if I was, uh, looking at, at, at a, uh, left handed hitter, the best left handed hitter is Jock Peterson. They need to go get him. They was going to go get him last year. They need to go on sign Jock Peterson. So, so, this guy so my Jock friend, Peterson. yeah, my, my friend here is aiming high. He's got, uh, <laughs> he's, <laughs> He's he got, wants everybody. Uh, yeah, he wants the yeah, he's he's we we got JD Martinez at DH. We got Jock Peterson in right field. And then we got Steven Strasburg yeah, and Madison yeah. Bumgarner. Nobody's I mean, giving hey. up nobody's giving up Strasburg after his his, his no, performance no, in the postseason. No. Bumgarner, I, I still like, think we I, should go. Listen, get. I like the I like the ambition. I like the ambition. <laughs> hey, I, I I wanted to talk about something before we got out of here and I almost completely forgot about it. Okay. Okay, shoot. Socks in the basement is gonna have some fun this offseason. Podbean.com, which is the company that we use to host our podcast, has now allowed certain podcasts, and we're one of them, to start live streaming shows. So if breaking news occurs in the offseason, I'll be able to just go live within like, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes or something like that. Like when we're ready to go, we can just go with instant reaction. Like Dave can come over, I can get him on the phone. So it might be something we do a couple times this offseason. You need the Podbean app, though, and I know that like you probably have your own player, and I'm not telling you you have to always listen through it, but if you subscribe through the Podbean app as well on your phone, you're supposed to get a notification that whenever we're going to go live, like a live thing is scheduled, it'll be happening in, at, at this time, and then you'll be able to listen through the app when you want to do it, but it only works through their app. And then the other thing that we're going to do in this offseason is when we do big interviews, I will do extended extra shows for them. And of course we always do our, our big meeting ones, you know? So like if there's a winter meetings, we did a winter meeting show last year. Remember when there's, when there's like, you know, spring training, we did extra stuff. We did extra stuff for Sox Fest. So there's actually going to be more content in the off season than there probably was during the regular season. Right. So it should be a lot of fun. But if you are interested in those live shows, go get that Podbean app. I should have more details on all of that on the next program because it just started happening and it's like a new thing that we're able to do to be able to go live. And if we go live, we could take phone calls live too on the app. Oh, nice. Okay. So you could actually call through the app and talk to us. So more details on this next week. Have a good week. Lots to happen. 
Lots to happen between now and the next show. I can't wait to see the beginning moves. I've been waiting for this now all month long. Let's go. Hashtag compete, baby. That's our, that's our mantra. Compete. That's all I want, Dave, right? Uh, I hope this time next week uh, we are excited about the moves that they have made and that we are not yelling and screaming and <laughs> babbling incoherently <laughs> because they have done nothing that you've wanted them to do and they have, in fact, uh, re-signed Wellington Castillo. His, his option will be picked up and he will be a bench coach slash fourth catcher. I love it. <laughs> Socks in the basement. Socks in the basement. Socks in the basement. Socks in the basement. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found and always on SocksInTheBasement.com.